Hello and welcome to the Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. My name is Luke Burridge and this is the show where I review every single science fiction book that I read as I read it. There's no set schedule, it's just whenever I finish a book, I uh, do the review, stick it up here on the podcast feed for everyone to listen to. And joining me today is Juliana. Say hello, Juliana. Hello, everyone. And uh, we're going to be talking about um, Altered Carbon today. And we're going to be talking about both the book and the TV, the Netflix series. It's, I was gonna, it's not really a TV series, is it? But it is a television program uh, produced by Netflix, but you can't watch it on TV. TV, unless you've got like a thing to plug into your TV streaming anyway, Netflix streaming show uh, and uh, the reason we're reviewing this is because of the it's a new show it's just come out I've reviewed this book before on my podcast so if you want to um, if you want a, a, a review which is concentrating purely on the book you can go back to I should I why do I always do this Was every time I'm like 43 yeah or? something like that episode 43 so back in like 2008 or 2010 um, I uh, let's have a quick look here. Altered, altered carbon. Yes, 42. back episode forty-two. Pretty good. So back in two thousand and nine, I read and reviewed this. So go back if you just want some purely about the book. Um, we will talk about the book, of course, and we'll be talking about the TV show. We're keen to keep it spoiler-free. But first of all, what do you think, Juliana, of the book? Just sort of like, should people go away and watch the TV show, or should people go away and read the book and then come back and listen to the rest of this podcast? What, which, which would you suggest? Well, I enjoyed the TV series more than the book. Yeah. Um, so I would say go watch the Netflix series. Yeah? yeah. It's a 10 episodes, about an hour each on average. An hour. So go check it out. Yeah? Yeah. I, so, I think um, it's worth it. Um, yeah. I would agree um, mostly to a point. You know, mostly, uh, like the, put it this way, Altered Carbon is five, it says here, uh, mass market paperback on Goodreads, it says 526 um, pages, first published in 2002. So we're going back to like, by uh, the way, quite a while. it was written by Richard K. Morgan. Yes, and Richard K. Morgan. Well, because we're going to be talking about the TV show as well, but. Uh, yeah, but Richard... he, he was um, uh, consulting. Oh, him. yes, that is true. He was a, uh, you know, uh, one of the producers, maybe not producers, anyway, obviously a story yeah. consultant and things yeah. like that on it. So Richard K. Morgan, Altered Carbon, or Richard Morgan, Depends. In America, he's Richard K. Morgan, but I think maybe there was other Richard Morgans that he uh, uh, okay. he couldn't use that name and so much. And he came out in 2002. The original book, yeah, 2002. Uh, okay. And so, um, yeah, it is a book which is about 100 pages too long. Or if you do what I did, which is listen to the audio book, it's about an hour and a half, two hours too long. And unfortunately, a lot of the pacing issues in the book are in that like last section, like that last third, the last you know the the qu- last quarter of it. It kind of bogs down and gets slowed down a bit. You know, we, we'll talk about some of those issues later on. But yeah, I think this is one of the few times where um, I would say the TV show is better than the book. Not that it's a better story than is in the book, and it's uh, I actually like a lot of the things in the book better than the TV show, but. I think overall the TV show has got a has got a better payoff for the time that you're going to spend with it, you know. Yeah, and it, I think for me it explained things a lot. Um, I had a, just a clearer picture of the whole thing yes. in front of me. Like the book was sometimes a bit too. Well, I think this is the thing. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we're not going to we're not going to do any spoilers. We're just going to talk about like what we like about these different things. And so just even if you've not listened to or watched it or read it or anything, let's we'll just carry on for a while. But I do understand what you mean. One of the main differences between the book and the TV show is that the book, I think, has a lot more roots. It has a, you know, its roots are much more in the noir style of like, hey, I'm a detective and I'm going out and about on the town. Mm. And, uh, and you know, there's this, uh, you know, there's this rich person who comes to me and then there's the femme fatale who is there, you know, the, the, uh, the woman who uses her good looks and her sex appeal to uh, try and get her way. And then the cops and some of the cops are crooked and all these different kinds of, and there's the underworld people and all of that sorting through the you know the tales of passion which is very noir like that is very much what the book feels like however the tv yeah. show is like oh no we're just doing blade runner ghost in the shell that's that's it that's what we're yeah. doing here yeah. so there is a bit of the noirness but a lot of the influences on the book which make it very noirish um 
And I mean, it's still cyber, you know, it's still full on cyberpunk in the book, but in the TV show, they really lean into the cyberpunk and they take away a lot more of the noir style of like, okay, it's first person narrator by the main detective and everything is told from his point of view. In the story, uh, sorry, in the TV show, they widen out the story and say, this character over here, they're actually going to have a character arc of their own and they're going to have a story of their own and a character of their own much mo- more so than the book. Yes, I think that actually helps the, the, the book and the story a lot to have not only this one focus you mean it helps the tv show story. it helps the tv show yeah, yeah i mean it helps the story in in the tv show to get just a bit more i don't know um, yeah you have more like you, you, you there's more to latch on to yeah, yeah it's yeah. not just like what is this guy going to do is he going to survive what's going to happen to him and everything in fact he even mentions this in the tv show quite a bit sort of like going oh the people who you meet you know get a get a group a team around you and they're expendable but you're not the mission's not expendable but the people around you are expendable and in the book you can go oh yeah they did feel pretty expendable except for maybe except for ortega who is like the main the second main yeah. character whereas in the tv show you think oh this is just as much ortega's story as it is Takeshi Kovacs. Yeah, and also it's it's a bit more about the team thing. Yes. It's more about the... I mean, they, they keep repeating it, the yeah. pack thing. But um, I think that makes some better points than it does yeah. in, in the book. In a book, it feels more like a lone wolf. Yes, it very is thing. a lone wolf. And, and unfortunately, as I'm saying... If it was the story that was in the TV show, which was filling up the book, I would say it wouldn't be too long and there wouldn't be pacing issues because you'd have to fit all that stuff in there. Whereas in the TV show, it all fits. I do think there is a a bit of pacing issue in the last two episodes, but like it does slow down a bit and it spends a bit too long doing the big dunamon uh, dunamon and uh, climax and reveals and all that kind of stuff. I I, I thought in the book it was worse. Well, the point is... I read the book first and then I watched yeah. a TV show because so I already knew what the kind of the basic storyline was going to be and how yeah. it was going to resolve and I was just waiting for it to get there whereas you hadn't seen that before no, in the TV show. I actually had a, an interesting way of consuming yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, you you started the book. I started the book then I got uh, what, what, uh, No, no, what happened? We watched like the first episode of the f- We half started of the, watching it yeah, we watched, 20 minutes or so. You watched 20 minutes at the start of the show and then yes. I said oh no, it's probably best to you know read the book first but yes. you were struggling with the book and I was like oh, just, yeah. just, just watch the TV show. Yeah, I got about Two, uh, three, th- three quarters in the book, and then I thought, uh, uh, it's really, pff, really yeah. And then you watch the TV show, and then I watch the TV show, and then I kind of like got the hang on it. Yeah, like, and then uh, you're like, let's go back to the book yeah, to yeah, see and, how it ends. Yes, and to just see the differences. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, the, 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 I mean, there's lots of differences between the. I don't know, you know, the book's better or the TV show is better or something like that, because yeah. it does get a bit insufferable in that way. But the, the basic setup is, and I uh, and let me put the setting. The setting is is mostly you know San Francisco or Bay City as it's called, yeah. um, hundreds of years in the future. Now in the book, it seems very clear that this is sort of like a post progress world. In other words, progress has stopped. Technological progress has stopped in okay. many ways. Um, they have all this thing, and it's, there's even a sequence in the book, like there's a scene in the, uh, a chapter in the or part of the book where Bancroft, who is the main, um, he's the guy who has been, uh, he's killed himself, and now he needs to know why he's killed himself. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't understand how he, he's killed himself and he's yet wondering how he killed himself, um, you watch the TV show. But uh, anyway, it said in, but he pretty much says, all of the interesting people, all the people with drive, all the people who have things to do and contribute, they all left Earth and went out to the stars. And they're all, you know, they're colonizing, colonized, yeah. they're colonizing the planets and they've all gone. And we're just, all the people left back on Earth, the kind of the boring conservative people who are just happy to hang out and not really progress very much. Mm. Which meant that in the book, I found the setting to be like San Francisco, but yeah, a bit more modern, but some of the buildings, but you know, just like a basic city, kind of as we'd recognize it now. Of course, some more tall buildings, you know. Know, and whatever, cars. and some flying cars and stuff like that. But generally, like a, a city as recognizable now. Whereas in the TV show, they're just like, "Now we're just going to go Blade Runner. Uh, oh, yeah. It's going to be tall buildings. It's going to be all neon. It's all going to be crazy stuff like that." Which I found interesting, and I didn't mind it because it, even though it did look a bit cheesy, you can see they have spent a lot of money on that TV show. Yes. A lot of those special effects are very, very good. However, it didn't. It felt like the city was actually smaller than it looked because they went to the top of the... There was was the um, 
the Bancroft's the Bancroft resident, which is on the very, 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 very top floor of, of, a, really of a very, very tall building, a super yeah. tall building, a kilometre high tall building that was up above the clouds, two kilometres high up above the clouds or whatever. So they're like really high up. And then you have like Ortega's apartment, which is sort of like downstairs in an old church or, oh no, no, it's the, it's the uh, police station, which is an old church. Um, yeah. And that kind of thing, and a, and a few bars, and that's it. You didn't like the the height of the city, which is in the special effects, isn't reflected in the TV show. Everything is ground level or two kilometers high up a building, and there's there's not any. It didn't actually feel like I was in a big city. It felt like quite a small city, or it felt like a city about the same size, yeah. not a mega mega megalopolis as also it seemed to be in the special the, effects one of, the, shot. one of the characters. In uh, in in the book or something lives outside of, of yeah yeah the that's, city and yeah they stuff. live up in like it's like Oregon or Northern California somewhere o- Oakland no no it's, Oakland. yeah yeah they go whatever the like but the, in the book it's it, the whole story also takes place a little bit more on the outskirts yeah. somehow in this case there's there's actually a scene in the book which happens halfway across the across the Golden Gate Bridge and it's kind of implied in the in the in the book that. There is nothing. There, there's no. Ever, there's never any reason to drive across the Golden Gate Bridge now because there's not a lot up to the north. And if you do, you just get an air car and fly directly there. Mm. You don't drive up the road to get there. Whereas in the um, in the TV show, the Golden Gate Bridge has been. It's now just this big container park, but all the containers are people living in them. So it's all this like, like big stacks of yeah. yeah. Well, it's like in Ready Player One where yeah. you see the stacks. Everyone yeah. just stack it. It's sort of like oh, let's just do the stacks, but on the Golden Gate Bridge, which is great. It's a it's a really good fun look. It's iconic there. Yeah. But I never really got the reason why. Like if you actually had that if. Bay City did completely encompass the bay and, like, the buildings were spreading across the bridges. There's, like, billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of people there, but it didn't feel like a city of billions. It felt like a no. city of, you know, like San Francisco now, like, about a million, you know. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like that... We, I mean, there were some of those... Sh- no, sorry, not billions of people live there. Some, but, it, like, <laughs> but it would be the biggest city a, a in the world, people. yeah. Um, yeah, but the, some of those shots... You had some of those typical like Blade Runner shots, yeah. you know, the, a dark city with skyscrapers raining, of course, yeah, of course and yeah. then neon signs Always and not- hollow uh, yeah. stuff. Uh, but the, even there, you, it didn't feel like crowded. Yeah. Another uh, another few things which really kind of didn't remember it the wrong way, but like at the end, well, not at the end, but there's this there's this whole um, th- there's a location called Head in the Clouds, and in the book that is a uh, a um, a brothel, a high-end brothel, what they call the houses. It's one of the houses. Yes. It's like the super high-end brothel. And it was built on an old weather airship, a Zeppelin kind yes. of thing, which was kind of out, far enough out into the, uh, above the ocean, like out in international waters. And I always felt it was like international waters out there. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, it's a plot point that is head in the clouds and here. And in the TV show, they're like head in the clouds and it's, in an, it's just on like a flying spaceship. And it didn't seem to be any reason for it to be on a flying spaceship because it wasn't in international waters. It wasn't in, you know, the, it just seemed to like, it seemed to, for me to miss the point of why the head in the clouds was in a flying spaceship spaceship or in in the tv show or in an airship in the book like it seems to be very clear so i'm just saying some of the images they're like oh wouldn't it be cool like in the book it's like oh wouldn't it be cool if the if the brothel is on an airship flying out at sea you know in international above international waters out at sea and there seemed to be a reason for it was in the book in the tv show a lot of the like scene setting world building it didn't seem to be uh, there didn't seem to be any reason for it except it's it looks cool and cyberpunkish. I didn't need a reason for that. No, no. I I mean I saw this before. I read this in the book. Yeah, and uh, I think you just went with it anyway. I didn't. Need, I think it was just a, a totally valid thing that you would have a, a high end brothel, not just in the in on the ground where it's too many people anyway and too yeah. crowded, or whatever. Um, but you have it just there. Um, you know, like one in. I don't know. It reminded me a bit of uh, you know one of those motels out yeah. in nowhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's know, definitely it's a like, Vegas style. To yeah. It, yeah. So uh, I I didn't need the backstory. I thought it was it was um, sufficiently. Dead. Yes, I'm just saying that after read after some of the world building being very very clear hmm. in 
in the in the book, some of it was kind of let down though, just like, oh, it looks cool, oh, it's cyberpunk, it looks cyberpunkish. Mm. Anyway, we recently watched or uh, tried to watch the latest Ghost in the Shell remake slash reboot, whatever live action thing. Yeah, how oh, long did you get? Half we, an hour? Yeah, we got about half an hour into it, and it was awful. It was way worse racism wise than we were expecting, and uh, you know, whitewashing wise. But also, it looked really like after watching the latest Blade Runner. Mm. Even though I have issues with both Blade Runner movies. There's nothing that you can't say anything wrong about the look of it and yeah. the world building in it. It is amazing. It was in the, in the you know this um, ghost in the shell was like kind of pathetic. And this was and, and this TV show Alter Carbon. It looked kind of almost better than the Ghost in the Shell movie. Oh yeah, like, it, it, it because there it was like all too clean. It was sort of like it wasn't grungy en- enough in many ways to make it look real and lived in. It was because this was a TV show and you got to know the city a bit more slowly. Uh, there were those big glamour shots of the city as you were like flying in at the start and that looked actually the cheapest the city looked later on once you got used to it it, yeah. looked, it looks a bit better yeah anyway and some of the alley, 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 alleyways alleyways you, yeah, yeah. There, there, i mean it, it felt a bit like okay this is now this is the set yeah this and, is and the, we, we go was, back to the same they set kept on, that's, that's what i'm saying they kept on going back to like these three that there was this doorway mm. and then there was the entrance to the hotel and then there was this little alleyway where somebody was found and mm. that's it that's all you ever saw mm. of the city yeah, yeah, yeah whereas in the in the wide in the wide angle thing things and they draw it back and you see the big expanse of the city there's towers here and bridges between the towers and it seems all this multi-level stuff and it's sort of yeah. like no we go to the top of the building or the very bottom of the building and it d- never really felt like there was any inf- there was nothing in between yes like we never saw anything in between yes anyway so the setup of the book is that altered carbon is everyone has this thing in the back of their head um which records their consciousness and it can be taken out and put into other bodies so it's all bearing your body as a it's sleeve the stack. yeah the stack is in your head and then your then this you have different sleeves and the idea being that you can cast you can um transmit your personality between solar systems but also it's just sort of like a backup thing the idea being that you can have a spare body if you grow if you're very very rich you can grow clones and put your um you know your stack into another spare body and all that kind of stuff and transmit your consciousness between between different bodies and the setup is a very rich man um all the evidence seems to show that he killed himself and he's like 300 years old yeah he's like 300 years old bancroft lawrence bancroft and uh and he's sort of like, why would I have ever killed? Oh, yeah. And then he, re- he gets his backup, uh, and he's like, and he re-sleeves his backup. And it's like, so like why? A certain automatic yeah, backup he's plan. sort of like, why did anybody kill me? And everyone's like, no, nobody killed you. You committed suicide. And he's like, no, somebody killed me. And he gets, he hires in our main guy, our main private investigator, who uh, was an an un- envoy, which we'll talk about in a minute, but they bring him over from different um, from different planets. He's been on different planets anyway. They bring him over from Harlan's world. It's his first time on Earth, and he comes out, and he's been, you know, he's been cast over, and he's been in prison for a while. Prison means you just kind of turn off your turn off your brain and for give 150 you, years, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And and uh, in the in the in the um, book, it's been like. 30 or 10 years or 30 years or something it's not very long since he's ah, gone okay. off in the tv show it's sort of like yeah 250 years you've been in the stack and then he comes out yeah. um so uh, yeah there's a bit of a difference there but yeah so he comes out and he's going around and beating people up and shooting people and uh, punching people to try and get to the bottom of why who who killed this person or if he wasn't killed if he killed himself why did he kill himself yeah um and his name is takashi kovach now in the book it's just explained that the Jap- there was this planet which was mostly Japanese people funded it and then they brought over these uh, Slavic people as the kind of slave labor. In the TV show, they mixed it up a bit. It's sort of like, oh yeah, there's, you know, he had a, a, a you know, a Slavic white father and a Japanese mother, whatever, whatever. You know, yeah. so sort of like they, they mixed it round a bit there as well to, uh, you know, just to, I don't know, just... It works better in the TV show, I think, for that. So he's brought over. And in the book, most of what we see is of him is sort of like, oh, there's a bit of run-ins with the, you know, in his past, in the backstory that we get, there's a bit of run-ins with the triads, the Japanese gangs and things mm. like that, that he ran with them. And then he then he joined up to the, the, uh, the official army. And then he left that official army and became part of the resistance. Yeah. And then, uh, and then was, you know, killed after, by the end of that and then comes back later. And it feels very much like, especially in the, in the book, it feels a bit like the, um, 
the TV show Firefly, where there's the redcoats. Is it the redcoats or yeah. what, what's Mal and those guys? It starts off them brown coats. Yeah. Oh, is it your brown coats? Yeah, yeah. brown coats. That's it. Redcoats are some ales. <laughs> um, so the brown coats they start off and it starts by them losing the war. Yeah. And then it goes, and now three years after this resistance failed, all the people who were fighting there, we've got to put it back together, and there's still a lot of lingering resentment. And it feels very much like that in the book, that everybody knows who the Quellists were, and it's sort of like, oh, you're still a Quellist, there's lots of people around. But in the in the TV show, the Quellists were 250 years in the past, uh, and had this kind of historical, and the envoys who were fighting for the Quellists, they were yeah. kind of this historical little quirk. What do you think about the difference between those? Did you notice the... First of all, I must admit that um, the whole backstory in the book yeah. got totally lost on me. And, yeah. and, and that was probably also why I partly like, kind of um, lost um, the... Yeah, lost interest. Lost interest in it. Uh, when I watched the TV show, it, it, it was a lot clearer what was, what was the backstory about. Now, yes. I don't think it was all like completely lined up with what happens in the book. No, no, but it's I very different. I still have not figured out yes. well, what here's now the is thing. in the book. This is, this is the thing that I find very interesting, is that in the book, all of the stuff that the envoys can do, or could do, and all the things that the Quellis did, was kind of only just referenced in passing. Yeah. It is actually covered more in later books and things like that. Ah, like, so they, this is part of a series. Yeah, it's part of a series. Ah. But it was the first book, but it was very much written that, oh, there's more more ah. to come. Okay. But I get it from the book that they were m- way more like... Um, um, trained to influence yeah. the, the opinion of somebody, yeah. right? It was more of a mind... Mind tricks, mind... Yeah. Thing, but And the thing that I found most unsatisfying about the TV show, knowing the book, is that the envoys were like these badass everyone knew that the envoys like you say oh i have envoy training in the tv show he's the last envoy he, you know he was the only one to survive and they brought yeah. him back and everyone's like oh the last envoy in the book it's sort of like the envoys turn up and everyone's like oh shit an envoy i'm gonna stay away from this guy like just saying i'm i'm a trained envoy when he's being you know tortured or you know questioned in the book is enough to, for people to just go oh shit, right, this guy is a big deal. Like in really? The, yeah. It didn't get across to me like that. No, no, it's when he's being tortured in the book, one of the ways, you know, the, one of the ways that it comes out, they're like, oh, like if you're an envoy and someone has brought an envoy to Earth and employed them, that's way above our pay grade. Mm. They know how big it is. Whereas in the TV show, it's a curiosity. My no, problem... I actually thought it was it came across in the in the TV series really well. What the way that they managed to uh, get him out the the of the holding of the army and the way oh, no. that they got him out of virtual yep, I torturing understand that. stuff. That to me was m- way more impressive than yeah, what no, happened in the my book. My point is, it's not that what he does. I think in, in what he does in the book, in the current timeline, and in the TV show in the current timeline, what I'm saying is, what we find about the past of the envoys, I like it in the book that it's much more mysterious, that everyone is just like, envoys, oh shit. Like, the, the what they did in the past was kind of... Is is kind of tra- tra- like brought through by how people react to it in the current in the current world. Yeah, and like oh, we were you, you know we were envoys and we were sent here and we just kicked ass everywhere like that. In the TV show, we we get lots of flashbacks of the envoy training, but it's just people. It's like oh, these are like Ewoks hanging out in the woods. Yeah, that was. And then they go, I, and now we're going to go on a mission, and yeah. we see them go on a mission, and they just you know they download their minds into another place because that's the whole point of envoys is that they can travel around and be yeah. amazing soldiers. Even in other people's bodies because it's all in the mind they don't need their t- physical training they just have their mind training yes. and can do all of that and then they come back and they've had the envoy conditioning so they can swap between different bodies without going crazy all that different kind of all that different kind of stuff and in the book it feels like, oh man, these guys are amazing. And in the TV show, when we actually see who the envoys are, there was like, it's the last envoy. And I was like, but this was a group of like 20 people 250 years ago. How are these, like, how does anybody know about them? Yes. You know. I, I, I stumbled across this like, oh, they are hanging out in the woods, a bit like a Robin Hood type of yes. people. Uh, that also diminished it for me. But it, the whole, like, the yeah. whole, like, okay, what actually happened to these people yeah. got a lot clearer in, in, in the TV show than it, I, it got for me in the book. Yes, because they've, I think they wanted to fill in the backstory to have a story arc of, yeah. of, of Quell. Quellist, Quell, Quellist, Quellchrist, whatever her name is, know. the leader of the Quellists, and oh, also uh, that I never really got uh, from the book. 
uh, there were so many names. I have no idea who now actually the lead yes. was. It Sarah or no, Virginia no, the, or no, the, the Quell. Quell. Well, I, I, I can't remember. But the thing is, that, that there is clear. in in the later books. It is it, you know in the second the third book is, is actually there. It's a lot more about oh, let's go back to the the Harlan's world where ah. the where the Quellish rebellion is taking you know all that kind of stuff. It, okay. have, it go it cover, covers that a bit more. Okay. Um, like in the TV show, it kind of ends with like, oh, there's this quell person. Let's go. Let's go find her. That's pretty much what the the TV show lets. And that's kind of what happens in, in the in the third book. You know, that's the kind of okay. mission that he's going on is to reconnect with his quellist past. Okay. In the book, the quellists seem to be very much like in in the style. And I mentioned this on the SFF audio podcast that we did that we did about this. Is that there is a um, a good like tradition of lefty um, political view authors who write science fiction. Mm -hmm. um, it, people, um, people like, you know, Douglas Adams and... Uh, oh, I can't remember the names that I listed off. But there's lots of these different people who have kind of like different... Like more more lefty kind of like, y y you know, the young Trotskys when they were, you know, all that kind of thing. And they're like, oh, okay, so we're all communists here. And the Quellists seems to be like, oh, I was fighting for the Quellists, which was we all about... family, the, yeah, we share everything. Yeah, we share everything, yeah. do all that kind of stuff. Which I really quite like the political message in that. Because he's like, no, I'm going to stick it to the rich people. Because Bancroft is very rich and he's very powerful, so I'm going to stick it to him and it's all about you know tearing down tear, you know eating the rich and you know and, and spreading you know Robin Hood stuff spreading among the poor in the TV show they take the quellists in a different direction to say we are against long je longevity everybody over a hundred years old is going to lose the ability to you know uh, to uh, be human yeah to, to yeah. well not to be human yeah, if but they like, live that long but like once they get past a hundred years the stack fails so it's sort of like a, everyone gets a hundred years and yeah. that means everyone is equal and for me that felt really disappointing because the whole point of this world is that every, isn't everyone happy that they can be immortal of course, the rich people have truer immortality and nobody else can afford it. But it felt to me like, oh, if you really work hard, you can afford a sleeve and you get put into the sleeve. It's just like, how much are you always going to be saving up for the new sleeve when you're working in your current sleeve? It's yeah. sort of like a bit of a drag. And it's sort of like, yeah, after two, lifes, after two lifetimes, people just go, mm, that's a bit much now. And then they keep being woken up and they're like, actually, this time, don't wake me up again. This will be the last time yeah. you wake I mean, me up. And, and in the book, there's also this... Um, the, the group of people, the Catholics. Right? Yeah. So they don't want to be uh, yeah. getting a new sleeve. What I what I think is the biggest problem about the sleeving thing is that uh, you can lose lo your body. Yeah. And um, I know that sounds a bit weird because if you live in a society like that, y your body probably doesn't mean that much because, yeah, well, it's just a body. But still, like, you can wake up in a different thing because yeah. somebody else, uh, uh, a richer person, bought off your body. Yeah. And, and it's like kind of... Yeah, it, it, but the point is that in the book, it so, seemed to me, again, it's not entirely clear just from the, from the words of the book, but it seemed to be that the political thrust of Quellist isn't no to long life and no to the stacks and no to the resleeving. It's no to the people who are rich enough just to run, this, run roughshod over the people, uh, the, us little people. You know, it feels very politically current in the way of, like, massive wealth um, yeah, because if you live, inequality. If you just keep living in your same... Yeah. But, in, like, but, there but is again, no interruption. again, what I'm trying to get at is that the Quellist weren't against long life. They were against the accumulation of extreme wealth and wealth inequality. And so, in the book, they say, oh, you Quellists are terrorists. But it always felt like that they weren't terrorists. They were just on the losing side of a war. So then they're called terrorists. Hmm. In the TV show, they were terrorists. They were, they were a terror unit. They were causing terror. They were doing, you know, using violence for political gains, which were, which wasn't, and the political gains wasn't to do with the, wasn't to do with the politics of wealth inequality. It was sort of like the way that we're going to fix wealth inequality is to make sure everyone dies at a hundred years old. And for me, that felt like it diminished who the Quellists were. Mm. It felt like a serious political movement, which happened to fail in a war in the book. Whereas in the TV show, it felt so trivial and pathetic. The, the envoys didn't feel important because in the, in the book, it feels like the envoys were like these, like there was all these different troops and then there was the crack troops and it was the envoys who were the most important. They could go into different places and do all this crazy stuff. Whereas in the, in the TV show, it's sort of like, oh yeah, there's some guys in the woods who are running out playing, so running around playing soldier. And it just didn't feel important, you know, in that way. 
Mm. I like the look of it, you know, and I like the set and I like the actors and I like the story. But I was just a bit disappointed. Like in the book, the envoys are just like, oh shit, envoys. And in the TV show, it's sort of like, oh yeah, I remember the envoys. Who remembers the envoys? Yeah, it, it felt a bit more like, oh, you remember the... Uh, I, d- I don't know, like what some weird group 250 years ago, who if they came into the modern world, would you be scared of any soldier from 250 years ago? Mm. No. But some crack commando from the Vietnam War, you're like, oh shit, we're in the, you know, you know, we're in the jungle and fucking Rambo is turning up. You know, mm. there, there is a different way of looking at it, sort of like current super soldiers versus like a small terrorist group from 250 years ago. If There was a little bit of a mismatch there. Okay, it wasn't for me. Okay, it was just but- one thing that... I know, but I'm just saying, for me, that was a big thing. Like, it felt like the Quellis were a, politi- a serious political movement in the book and in the TV show, a mild, a mild nuisance with misguided um, ideals. Sure. Because, okay, here's a question. If you... It, who, which side of the war would you be on? Everyone lives to 100 and then dies, or everyone can live as long as they wanted to, if they can afford to be, you know, backed up or if they can get into a new sleeve and all that kind of stuff. Which one would you prefer? Well, but that does ha- doesn't have anything to do with it. It does. It does. Why? Because are you... Uh, what kind of quellist are you? Are you a quellist in the book? Or what, what do you think is more important? The quellist in the book where it's about redistribution of wealth and uh, and kind of a bit more lefty uh, socialist kind of values? Well, it, or is it, it... It kind of combines it because if you only live into 100 years... You can't accumulate that no, no, kind you, of wealth. No, the point is, you can. No, you cannot. No, you can. You just leave it to your children. That's what the world that we're in at the moment. We have got the highest... We've got, uh, I mean, in, in the UK and in America, it's literally the highest ever wealth inequality. The richest people are the richest people who have ever lived in the world, ever, now live. It, compared to, you know, the average wealth and, the, you know, all the different ways that you yeah. say. Like, one family... Of, uh, like, the, what is it, the um, uh, Walmart family. Mm. The heirs of the Walmart family together own as much, they have as much money as the bottom, like, 35, 40% of all people in America. And that's not the people who earned the money, that's not people who ran the company, and that's not the people, yeah, that's yeah. just the people who are inheriting it. Yes. So the whole idea of saying, oh, c- killing everyone or making sure nobody lives past 100, it feels so naive to think that that's the way to, to uh, wealth equality or you know bringing equality to better equality and better services and all the things that come with like not having people living in poverty yeah. just to say oh everyone everyone has to die at 100 it feels it feels like i was going to say it feels like a waste of the political umph of who the envoys yes. were meant to prove I, uh, I and think, who the I, th- were. I think for me the the umph of the un- envoys came across in in the tv show but what what happened there is that they just went the TV easier way yeah. of doing this. Yeah. They did not really want the politics in there. Yes. And I think it, that it, is more the point. Yes, I felt... And I don't think you could t- ask me what ki- what do yeah. you prefer because it, it doesn't really matter. No, I'm not, I'm not saying it. I'm not, that's the, that my point is that I thought the book has some political bite. It, it it's interesting to have a war where the wealth inequality people won and the old socialists all lost and they were on the losing side of a war and then yes. one of those comes back to earth and is like, no, fuck you guys. Rich people, I don't give a shit. You're rich, I fuck you. Like, that's the attitude that he has, and nobody else on earth has that ap- attitude. But because he's an old lefty, he comes into it and is like, he does have that attitude, and it felt... It felt more important. I never felt like when he came in the in the TV show that he actually agreed with the envoys that oh yeah everyone should die at a hundred. There was not none of that was in him. It was like it was some TV backstory writing. The political bite was taken out of yeah, it, I, I out of the book. In, in is the what TV I think. show, some other bits come to it as well. That I yeah. think uh, it was not so much that he was totally uh, within the. Uh, the politics of the envoys, but more that he found a family there. Yes, and yes, I think that, that was true. more important. Yes, and I think that is what we we have to see here that he was not actually like super hundred percent like uh, totally. Yeah, yeah. This is this is what I want. No, this he was, was like, he was following the group. He was yeah. finally having people and like. This and I think of, his sister in those flashbacks. From, yeah, his sister was never convinced, and you're like, oh right. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, in that backstory, I would be the sister. Sure, but I, that's and I know that's weird because she because she killed off all them. She no, this is why you well no, I I want to, but the point is, 
what the envoys started fighting for. It sort of like uh, it, it felt to me much more cult like. It felt like a, in, in the in the TV show, the envoys yeah. and all that, and the Quellis were a cult, very much a cult of personality. And it's one of those things that when the supreme leader stands up and now says, "Actually, the new decree is this: who's with me?" and everyone agrees. That is not how it, it, not, it felt I'm not very defend- totalitarian. I'm not defending. I know that this is better than the other. I'm just saying that it felt. A bit weird that our main hero was was like defending a cult and the person who disagreed with the cult and wanted to get out of the cult with aims against human like it, the cult obviously was they were terrorists and all that kind of stuff it felt like weird in the end that the sister became like you know she was the villainous one in that situation yeah. and he was the hero and i'm like eh, i never i've never seen in the book takeshi kovach as a heroic figure and in that case i thought they were trying to present him present him a bit too much as a hero and i always think he's an anti-hero the tv show he's much more heroic than the book let that me put true. it that way but but still i i think in the book so many things are written so unclear yeah. That this just doesn't come across. Well, the point is, it's not unclear. It's keeping it vague. It's not unclearly written. Yeah, it's exactly. keeping and it that's... slightly more vague and ambiguous for you to read into the situation how badass it was and for you to read through the actions and the character of the main character. And it is You so can tell he's, he's a socialist. You can tell he was fighting and he can't, pre- he, he can't express that because his side lost in the war. You yeah, know. but still, I mean, in, in that book, there's so many things that happen like, and then he goes there and there and here oh, and yeah, this yeah. and this. I do, and no, no. I do it's agree. It's a bit, too much. Yes, I do agree about that, but I'm, I'm only talking about the presentation of the backstory. Exactly, and that was really bad in this book. I just and like... Clearer in the TV show. No, don't care. Again, it was, that's what I don't. Was like, I like. You know, I like the slightly more vague. Who were the envoys and what did they get up to and what were they fighting for? And all that. I like it sure. more vague in the book because it means I fill in with the kick-ass. Like who were the envoys? The envoys were like fucking James Bond. The envoys were Jason Bourne. The envoys were you know um, Black Widow from the uh, you know the Avengers. You know what's sure. the name like that? Someone who can just go in and just with their just with their wits, just with their minds, just go into a situation and go bow, bow, get out, get themselves out and it was hinted at in the TV show but what they really were was an, a cult of Ewok worshippers who had some weird political ideas and were terrorists and I just didn't in the book I just didn't feel it. Anyway let's move on from that let's move on to one thing that I actually really liked about this is the racism or not the racism the the uh, race, race issues that we have to Takeshi Kovac who is a Slavic slash well, Japanese. I think I think in the book it's very clearly that he was completely Japanese, um, but he had you know or he was m- more Japanese. He went by Takeshi more, like in his previous life. But now he's Kovac and he's more Slavic, and because he gets he's a Japanese guy who gets put into a white, very very white Caucasian body in the TV yeah. show. Um, it's sort of like very uh, actually. It's um, I think the actor is Swedish. Um, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's Robocop. If you remember the yeah, yeah, Robocop yeah. remake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's he's him. Robocop ah. in there, and there's a reason why they have you know he's like he's a, a big, big like guy. fucking he's as big as Robocop even without the armor on. Yeah. You know, he's a big guy yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah, you kind of I think he's Robocop. Anyway, Swedish. So anyway, like as 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 tall and as white and as blonde as they come, although maybe not that blonde. But anyway, and well, then but there's certainly. there's a Japanese there's a Japanese person in there, but he's. But you see in the TV show that he's actually spent most of his life not in a Japanese body um, or a Japanese a Japanese looking body. I don't even know how to yeah. say it. Like again, this is a this is a TV show. What's his name? Joel Kinnaman. Yeah, where is he yeah, from? Sweden. Yeah, he's from Sweden. He's so, as old as you are. Is he? Yes. And he's uh, thirty-six. Thirty-eight. No, you see, no, I'm 37. Uh, yeah, so but I, was I looking... mean, yes. Okay, right. so I was wondering how old. Anyway, so it, what do you think about the presentation in the TV show of? I know it's weird to say this, but when they switch between the bodies, when it goes from him, like in the modern day, and he has a flashback into into a different actor of a different nationality, of a different, uh, you know, ethnicity, race, however you want to say it, I was immediately convinced the tv show there was never a moment are when you actually asking me a question yeah because you did ask me a question yeah yeah. so okay. what do you think about that yeah. like <laughs> that was the this is one of the first notes i made about about the tv about show about the tv show yeah. that there was hardly any ever any tv show where i enjoyed this uh 
ethnic diversity and sexual diversity、yeah. as much as I did in this one. Yeah. Because it was, it just felt totally right. You had like everything, and the the cool thing about this sleeving, cross sleeving, and all this kind of stuff was such a perfect、um, opportunity for actors to really act. Yeah, yeah. It was heartbreaking. There was this one situation where you had a black woman resleeved in a white guy. And the way that that was、yeah. acted, it was amazing. And then you had this other guy, this bad guy, and,、yeah. and he got like also yeah he put it, he, he it, put himself it, in、uh, in other in and other then the, the ability of the of the actors to there was this very the oh yeah there was、uh, in the TV show it wasn't in the book、yeah. where、uh, Ortega got this body oh yeah don't the, give it away don't you don't need to give that kind of stuff away but I'm just saying this it's, was it's、serious. set up in the very opening of the movie you see someone who's、um, who. It, In the Reese leaving clinic, someone's daughter has died, and the only spare body to put the daughter back into it. Sort of like you said, we're going to get a new body, and it's sort of like this old, old,、uh, uh, old like sixty-year-old, you know, drug addict woman body, and、yeah. some. You know, ten-year-old girl, girl or twelve-year-old girl, seven-year-old girl has been put、horrific. into it, and she's just like doesn't know what to do or what's going on there at all. I quite like that actually. At the start, it really shows up like all of the spare bodies that everybody was putting into were these like broken-down bodies. It was like the lowest rent bodies that you could possibly get、yeah. for this public resleeving、yeah. policy. And then Takeshi Kovacs, who's just in this like massive built, like、yeah. amazing, like amazing muscles, amazing health, top of his health、yeah. um, thing. Uh, yeah. So, but this was a, a really great opportunity for, for yes, for, it was for really good. And, yeah, and you could really tell. I just don't want to give away all the moments because some of those moments are, are so, so yeah so good. When you see this different person and you're suddenly like, oh no, what's going、yeah. on?、There? So first of all, it is the the ethnic diversity that jumps out, but also I think the. The ratio of badass men and women is just great in the TV yeah, show. It's it just amazing,、you、and I really like the things that they added into this to、yes. make those other characters more badass. And it, it, because you can look at the book, and if it was just the book, you would like it put on te- on the television show、mm. in the same style. Like if they had everything the same except that all the action happened as it would have been the book, it would be very boring. And actually, the book does get a bit tedious with all of the punch. Like、yes. and then he went in here and punched someone, and then he、yes. went there and shot someone, and then there's、yeah. another fight here. And then Like、and, and somebody it, and attacked it, him. Yeah, and someone attacked him, and he fought them off here, and then he shot them there. And it's sort of like, how can we make this action more interesting? First, like there's this, there's this part in the book where he has to, has this grudge match in this, which I think it went on a bit too long. But there's someone you got to fight this person, and you know, to sleeve death, whatever, like that.、Mm. And in the book, it's just him. And in the TV show, it's sort of like, okay, the second main character, like the the co-star, is, is yeah. Ortega, yeah. who is the woman、uh, police officer that he's、uh, liaising with. Yes. And working with, it's sort of like, okay, you've both got to, both of you are in there now,、yeah. and you've both got to fight. And you're like, you know what? That was a much better scene because of it.、Yes. Like, and there's there's a way that they make Ortega slightly more powerful, so she doesn't have the she doesn't have the the、um, combat stuff wiring in her body.、Yeah. But they get a way that it's kind of plausible that she's an action. Action hero fighting person as well. Yeah, she's bad as in other ways. And some of the people who are in the book who are just like there's the so some people in the book he just goes and talks to and then disappears and they come back into the story later. The TV show has them sticking around for a lot longer and being part、yeah. of the action. And being like、uh, what I also right, uh, uh, the themes in the in the TV show are a bit stronger than they are in the book. Like they have the the theme with the the family and、uh, you know finding people、uh, you want to work with and then Kovacs being like a lone wolf and then、yes. he kind of、uh, finds back people and、yeah. then it becomes more than just oh these are people I just use yeah in the book he is using people and he does get to know a few people but it's pretty much only Ortega in the、yes. book where he actually gets to know them oh and Eileen who is the the computer hacker which is in the, the, she's in both、yeah. both uh, both uh, both versions but still different in the book yeah different very different in the book、yes. however in the in the in the book it's it's Like the morals, or the, it feels a bit like a bit less clear in that way. Like he he is learning and he is developing as a、yeah. person, but really, like he comes in as an envoy bad 
badass and leaves an envoy badass. And he has learned some life lessons along the way. But the TV show is much more of like, okay, you learned these lessons in the past. Like your father beat you. You killed your father because he killed your mother. You know, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff is much clearer. More, heavy, more heavy-handed. Yeah, it's a much, Certainly. much clearer in the TV show. Yes. And then it seems to be very much about him finding his family. Whereas he thought his family were the Quellists and the envoys that he's training with. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, what about my sister? Is she my family? His sister doesn't exist in the book at all. Yeah. Um, or is it my, you know, or is it these people who I'm putting around me? But his, he has to kind of put off his Quellist past because Quell, Quellchrist or whatever her name was, she was always saying, um, in the, this is in the TV show, he was saying, the people who you bring around you are expendable. Yes. The mission is not expendable. You're not expendable. These exactly. other people are. Yeah. Um, so there, and so as he comes into this situation, he's like, oh yeah, all these people are expen- expendable. And he's having to kind of go, actually the Quellists were wrong about this. I need to, you know, I need to, these people have to become more of a family. And they, it's yeah. all, much more about family and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's some really, there's a lot better payoffs. And in the TV show, sorry, in the book, it's just Kovach and he does all the action and, and literally does it all. You know, he, he get double sleeves, which is uh, a mild spoiler, but not too much of a spoiler because you know it's going to happen. As soon as they say at the start of the book, oh no, nobody's allowed to double sleeve. You're not allowed to have your, your mind in two bodies at the same time. You're just like... I wonder what's going to happen before the end of the book. And it does happen. Not only the bad um, guys do it. Yeah, not only the um, bad guys do it. But in that one, it's just all him. And in the TV show, it's sort of like, it's a whole team effort. It's yes. much more of a team and, effort. And that was certainly what I enjoyed definitely more than, yeah. than in the book. And also, it because of that, it allowed more... At, like, the TV show has a much higher body count and you see a lot more of it Mm. in a way because there's more people involved you go oh what about this person are they going to die there's extra police people that you follow are they going to survive there's family members are they going to survive there's other people brought in and you're like it's it's a lot more of like ah there's a lot more at stake it's not just will he solve the problem it's also will he solve the problem and like how many of his team can he connect with and and, win with and and keep alive it's uh, as in other tv shows where you have a uh, a, a character on the edge of to the bad guys that like you know the bad guys don't like them yeah. and what they do is they then attack uh, the the, bi- the next next to him like yeah. people he likes and their family yeah 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 and I think there were some heartbreaking scenes in the TV show yeah and it yeah was, it was uh, it was pretty heavy pretty heavy very emotional let me go to some of my oh uh, no come on no come on um, so um, also what I wanted to say about the ratio of women and, and men is that I really enjoyed um, how they. Uh, in the TV show, especially how they, oh, but it, that is a little bit in the book as well, but not quite as much. How they showed strong women, but also yes. weak men, yeah. and that happens not so often. Yes, that is true. And uh, there was this one scene in the book, and I actually um, uh, in in the book, uh, the uh, I, Irene uh, was actually a woman. Yeah. Um, and so. Uh, she she wasn't quite like there, there was some different like yes. levels, but um, that one scene in the t- the TV show takes more advantage of what it would look like yes. to be cross sleeved, what it would look yes. like to have a young person, an old person's yeah. body, an old person and a young person's body. Yes. Like you meet these people and go, they look about twenty two, yeah. and they're sort of like, oh no, they're two hundred and fifty. Yes. And other people you would meet and they go, well, that looks like a seventy year old. Oh, it's, it's a, a fifteen year old, yes. or whatever like yeah, that. Yeah. And also, so what comes along with this? You have this ethnic diversity, you have the strong sex diversity and also yeah. you have a really good balance between um you have some straight uh, stuff going on and yeah. then you also have uh, quite a few gay yeah. uh, encounters just which it's not it's just even part of it yeah. it's just part of it it's yeah. not even talked about it's yeah. just like okay um we see this there this is there okay yeah well, sure. this is what i want to say it's it's so weird like it, this is the difference between we, we we've been reading these books and they've been different gender pronouns and all that yeah. kind of stuff. This is feels like a, a real rich vein of what gender pronouns would you use for someone who was born physically a woman but is now sleeved in a male sleeve. Yeah. You know what yeah. about racial things? Like that's what I was saying before. Sort yeah. of like what race is Takeshi Kovacs? Well now he's a white guy, now yeah. he's Japanese, now he's, you know, um, yeah, Polish, now he's Swedish, what is, uh, whatever. Like, this is, comes down a bit to, like, the, the soul of the thing, you yeah. know, what, what you uh, de- define yeah. yourself as, now, right? Yeah, let me let me bring in that in, in stuff. So, we, I've already given away a little bit at the end of the, in, in, in both the TV show and the movie, he double sleeves himself. He needs to be seen to be going somewhere, um, but then also going but also going somewhere else. And um, what I in the book, 
he he just gets a, a a cool combat sleeve. He just get you know he's, he gets another sleeve from somewhere. Yeah. Um, can't remember yeah, he's, exactly. He's what. A different, different yeah, body. Yeah, it's a different yeah. body like that. In the TV show, I thought I knew it was going to go because what they do at some point, they're like, "Hey, check out this combat model. It's styled after some of the DNA that we found of one of the old envoys. So this is sort of like this is like the old envoy model, and it was his body, like it was his DNA. He looked down at himself in when when they were oh, yeah, in the fighting arena. In yeah, yeah. the fighting arena, is like, "Check out this body. Yes. This is this is what we've got. This is the this is what model one of the latest models that we've yes. got. You know, it's there was it, a- that model is." mentioned in the book but it's just sort of like a combat sleeve it's it's more yeah, it's artificial not, it's not his original body in the tv show it's hi, it's him when he was younger it's him yeah. in it's flashback to Ke- takeshi is you know tack rather yeah. than kovach yeah. and i was like great at the end yes. we get all this flashback stuff and then we got the modern stuff and at the end when he double sleeves we're gonna they're both gonna be here and then in the in the tv show they don't they no. actually they actually just they they do a forced clone of him uh, well, well, quite, the, 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 the bad guy kind of yeah uh, does yeah. I don't know yeah. it just disappears. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, no, well, you mean the, the 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 other other version of him? He leaves at that point. What are you talking about? The bad guy. I, I just don't know how oh, clear right. I can talk now. No, I'm just is saying. This now? Oh, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry. But okay. uh, but what I'm saying is, it was it seemed to be setting up an ending where old like old Takeshi gets it. Like Takeshi gets his body his back. back. Yeah. His body back. Yeah, and so and, he, and they're both going to be next to each other. Yes. But they don't. They take it in a different way. It's just the same actor playing both parts. Yes. And which is good because I also like a bit more of that when they do the. the there's this great way of they decide which one is going to do something. You know, yeah, go, well, let's make a decision and they do. Paper, rock, scissors. Now, in the book, that's kind of explored a bit of like, oh, what? Because they're already different. They're already because they're in different bodies. They're you know their biology is different, and the reactions to the people around them and their sex drive is different, yes. and that kind of stuff. In the TV show, it's sort of like, oh no, you're both the same person. So they yes. start playing. They start playing uh, paper, rock, scissors, and it goes on so long that you don't actually get to see who it is. You yes. don't actually get to see the yeah. end of it because the idea is like, oh no, they have the same thought it's processes. Same. Yeah, yeah. And um, which I, I this part, like I, I think this was. So so much better done in, in the TV show than in the book. Yeah. Um, and also... I, well, it's just more visual. Thought, it's more I visual. I thought that, you know, that arena, when they went to it, first of all, I found it genius that uh, an AI runs a, a, a battle place where yeah. people can punch. Well, the hotel is, is a fun the character. Hotel is another thing that I want to say. Okay. Um, so the... Um, uh, they go into this arena and then they walk through it and then we see the actor of Takeshi Kovacs before. Yeah, the young, uh, we the see flashback him, uh, actor. And I thought, oh, that's great. And it's, I thought ex- exactly you, what's going to happen. Kind of thing, yeah. And then the, the actor's going to change and then yeah. the original, like the actor plays as if he would be back in his body. And stuff. Yeah. It didn't happen. Uh, it was kind of like the bad uh, b- bad guy uh, got himself into that body and then yeah, that but guy no but he didn't he never he never he was not really used that that no, sleeve but, but that combat saw him sleeve once and it was amazing to see i could yeah. see the other the bad guy in, in that yes, body yeah exactly the, the acting was great. that's a great thing <laughs> it was great. and what i find really intriguing Again, this is not but a spoiler. Then it, of course, it disappears. Like the body yeah, yeah, just disappears. It disappears, and yeah, that, that just, was the disappointing thing. Yeah. I thought, oh, this is going to be. But it felt like they put that in there for oh later. If yeah. we need to have that same actor yeah. that we all know as Takeshi Kovacs, if he yeah. turns up in the modern world, that will explain how he has his his original body back yes. because they did find traces of his DNA, which does actually make sense because yeah. he did. You know, they did find like they they had his body on yeah. file or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, another thing that was different. Again, I'm not just bringing up the differences between the book and the, all the differences between the book and the TV show. I'm, I'm exploring these differences and why I enjoy, like what I like, what this the questions that brings up what, here. Yeah. In the in the book, if you're a Catholic, you kind of sign a document and you say, "I'm my stack can't be reanimated after I die," and it's based around you know you signing a document and saying, "Yes, I've converted to be a Catholic." Yes. In the TV show, they actually code the sleeve. It, it's sort of like it's encrypted. It's yeah. like the religious, co- like your religious belief. You say yes, encode my thing. So it's impossible. It's impossible to reanimate somebody. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are some codes, but it's it feels very much like an encryption thing rather than just a legal document. It's sort of like a computer encryption. Yeah. And I, I and I like that. I think more in the TV show. And also the idea that the stack is sort of like, wow, this is magical technology that you can download your brain into a small thing that you can take out the back of your neck. In the book, it feels a bit too advanced for the rest of the technology. Mm. Whereas in the TV show, they said, oh, yeah, there was the Martians and aliens. Well, not Martians, but we found some alien remains on Mars and we kind of back solved their technology and we created these sleeves. And it's sort of like this little bit of alien technology in all of us. And I'm like, oh, right, okay. 
that explains it kind of kind of makes yeah. it a bit more sense so yes. um yeah uh yes um but so uh i only have one more comment okay. uh, which is a non-spoiler comment at the end of the TV show, do you remember the scene where they say, look at this angel wing? This angel wing is actually part of the... It is actually one of the Martians. It's actually one of the aliens. Do you remember? Right at the end, it's sort of like the third to last scene where they were up in the uh, Bancroft re- residence yeah. and they say, look at this thing, this fossil. It's a fossilized alien. Yeah. And it's this, it's this kind of like wing, like this bat wing, angel wing thing. Mm. That's setting up for season two because the second oh. book is, is kind of more of a space adventure where yeah. they just discover a, a, a like an alien uh, a big dumb object you know so there's like a yeah. i think it's a broken a broken alien spaceship <laughs> and they've got to get into it and it's more about you know finding more of this leftover technology that mm. they was originally found on mars these you know these song spires these leftover t- alien technology yeah, these trees that sing uh, yeah and it seems a bit weird that it was all mentioned and then in the like right in the very like the last quarter of the last episode they're like oh look at this fossilized alien and then they're like and moving on i was like that's setting up for season two. It, I, I, it's always funny to see these little these little television tricks that they play. Yeah. You know, I remember watching the Lost, and it's about people who have crashed in a plane on a on a island yeah. in the Pacific, and you see everyone on this on this plane, and each one of them gets a flashback story. You know, all the main casters, of course. and then one of the main characters gets a flashback in the first uh in the in the last episode and he meets someone in the airport and he's like hey who are you and she's like oh i'm down at the back of the plane and she shows the ticket she's down on you know row 48 f or whatever it is and he's up in the front and and i was just like oh so season two so they can keep doing flashbacks and have new cast members the back the people who the back of the plane lands on the other side of the island and they they survived and that we're gonna get a whole new cast i never watched season two of, of lost um, apparently that is what happened. They just go, oh, there's other people survived and all the other stuff. But you have to, you have to introduce that in the, in the last episode of the first season. Mm. Introduce so, like so, a li- so there's a little bridge. If they yeah. suddenly turn, if if it would be like episode one of season two, suddenly oh, and there's people who survived from the back of the plane. If you just like. Oh, that's convenient, like yeah, that. Yeah. So they, I, I saw a few of these little things like put into that last episode. Okay. One, we're going to find Quellchrist uh, or whatever, the Quellist movement. Going to find them again, and also this alien technology. Yeah, watch out, season two. Yeah. Okay, so you know that because you've read the other. I've books. read the books. How many other books are there? There's two more books. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> weirdly, d- very different tone. This is this book is um, a uh, you know the book is a, like a noir detective kind of mm. adventure. Uh, the second book, it, I think it's called Fallen Angels or something. It's a uh, space adventure, sort of like, hey, we're the space marines and we're going here and we're exploring the spaceship. Okay. And then the third one is much more kind of political action fighting back on Harlan's world. Okay. And it's mentioned in the book that Harlan's world has got this alien technology around it that nobody, you can't fly anywhere. Yeah. So if you take off on a plane which is bigger than a helicopter and go too high, yeah. it immediately gets zapped by the um, by the uh, um, like these the space drums. lasers. Yeah. Space lasers. And they say, oh, there is a few times when you can fly when there's a bit of a gap and the, spa- the alien space lasers that are left over aren't there anymore mm. but you know they can they manage to get on on and off the planet by transmitting their brains but that's harlan's world everything is low down and nobody mm. flies anywhere yeah. and the third book is set there so oh, okay. it's all set up in this you know in these different nice. in these different uh, setups but um yeah so uh, that's good it's uh, that's a trigger so those are all my notes have you got anything else you I want have to say a few more things okay um first of all I was uh, impressed. I, I mainly did notes about the TV series, yeah. so don't mind that. We've gotten all um, this way with with no hardly any spoilers as well. So let's just wrap it up without doing any more spoilers. I, I don't do spoilers. Of course not. There were many, many naked people. Oh yeah, lots of naked people. Naked people, like like you could see penises and stuff. Lots of penises, on TV. lots of I boobs. I was impressed, and uh, I thought it was uh, done in a very. There were definitely more boobs than penises. Well, yes, and uh, but pu- it is quite pubic different. hair. Oh, yeah. you can see like lots of styles of pubic hair style and stuff. Yeah, it's interesting as well. What this is the reaction that I've for? heard from lots of times. Oh, the book is just full of sex, and I'm like, first of all. It's about sex workers and brothels well, the, and yeah, all that kind of stuff. The problem is it starts off quite sex heavy. Yes, it, it does. Mean, it's like, but there are the only... The first thing is he, he, fall, he wants to fall asleep after he got re The first thing he thinks is, oh, I wanted to masturbate and then I fall, fell asleep. 
Yeah. Great. But the point is, it's about living another... The th- people complain about sort of like, oh, it's about this and about horniness and about sex and stuff. But He it, thinks about his penis a lot. He does. But the point is, if this is a story about you going into somebody else's body, like if you were put into a man's body, what is literally the first thing you would do if you were put into a man's body? Okay, Julian is pulling a funny face. In other words, I win <laughs> that mean, point. I win. The, if I was I put into the penis, yeah, of course you'd sure. be like, you'd be like, like oh flip shit, flip it Look around, at shake it around. Yeah, you'd be that's funny. Yeah, be like, uh, but that's that would be it. It's just uh, like the boobs; they're just no, hanging. No. They're attached again, to yes, and heavy. Yes, and I again stuff. Um, and anyway. uh, Richard Morgan has has written on about his other books. People say you're always talking about sex. He's like, when I was a young man, sex was the driving force of my personality and all of my social life. See, that's the da- dangerous things about man. Well, it, it's true. Like, yeah. and, and he wrote something like that. When I was at university, every single night I went out, it was to drink and mostly to have sex. And every time that you got went away somewhere without kissing and having sex with someone, or, you know, getting in that way, it, that was the, what the entire night was structured about. And I can see that in my own history. Not, not, maybe not to the same extent, but I see it. And you're saying, you often ask me, like, how, like when was the last time you thought of sex and it's always sort of like yeah like about eight minutes ago or something and you're like oh I've not thought of sex for the last day and a half or there something there was a stretch in my life where I hadn't had sex didn't about things that, uh, yeah. think about sex for six years <laughs> and I didn't suffer I didn't I don't know I'm There's, alive and it's perfect and fine without I don't think I've been more than six hours in my life since I was uh, 16, 17 years old without thinking of sex or my penis or so- in something like that way just it's crazy. just I know it's crazy but that's just it. Oh. so what, 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 so what, the, what, what I'm saying what the book is about people complain that there's too much nudity or the book's got all about sex it's like yeah but that's what the book is that's what even though there's, there's two sex scenes in the whole book but it is about that. There, there's one thing there are two things in the book that I made a, a note and highlight of and there's one thing that it's not right now, uh, and I think that is like a very important statement, and I think that should be true. What's that? It's um, who says this? It's um. Have you ever been seven months pregnant? Uh, seven months. Yeah, that's um the uh, what's it? I I Eileen I I yeah. Irene, Irene saying yeah. Um, uh, have you ever been seven months pregnant? I shook my head. No. That's too bad. It's an experience we should all be required to go through at least once. And I yeah. think in, in this world, it could actually be possible. Yeah, it feels it like the culture like, in that way. Yeah, it, it's kind of like if you have uh, education in this world, how would it go? It would go that every every stack has to go in a female body, in a male body, in a black yeah. body, in an Asian body to just experience and all that we don't, we are not able to experience. Yeah, you know? it, it, is, it, in, it is explained though in the, in the TV show more than the book that by swapping around between different sleeves it does make you a bit crazy yeah, it does. by doing that that's what you know the patchwork man is a bit like that you know yeah, like yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's had so many different things he doesn't know who he is anymore yes. in the book I think the patchwork man even though I like it is one of the weakest parts and all that kind of yes. stuff I wish they'd have just cut that out and yeah. got to the chase uh, they were one of the, the, the confusing uh, yeah. bad parts um, the there's one there's more uh, yeah, oh, the yeah. hotel we've I'm been sorry. going one hour yes, now I know but it's, it's good yeah, okay. I, I like, okay let's go through some of the more world building a bit it's you, a, I, you said here the about. hotel in yeah. the book it's in the, the book. Hendrix and yeah and, who, and it appears as a, a, a person with a guitar in his hand um, when, but only only once. inside only inside the, the virtuality, virtuality. Yes. Otherwise, it's a faceless hotel running um, running uh, customer service routines. Yes. And it's not got very much personality until you actually find it. It's like, oh, it does have a personality. Yes. And of course, they looked at it in the TV show and like, oh, right, let's have let's that personality. Let's make something of that. Yeah. And I think that was very well done. And I yeah. think the choices they made to, to make it into a different character uh, yeah. were really great. Apparently not a choice. The uh, yeah. Yeah, the estate of Jimi Hendrix wouldn't allow oh. him to be literally a murderous, um, a, insane AI yeah. uh, in the book, which I understand. And also, Poe, you, you can get anyone to play oh, Poe. And it's great. And, and I, which I just did uh, last year, I did the, the podcast with Jesse about uh, The Raven yeah. uh, by Edgar Allan Poe. And it's just great. It's, yeah. uh, it fits so well. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. But that's the thing with the TV show. They can go, what are all the great ideas in the book yeah. which weren't really How paid off in the yes. book? Let's How do that better. How can we enhance them? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I also think um, the, the idea 
that you can not have only positive things about the sleeving and of course the bad things about being yeah. uh, cross sleeved and stuff but also what they can do to you is they can torch you and kill the sleeve where you in and then take your stack out and just yeah do that well, that's, again. That's what they do in the virtuality. It's sort of like, we can kill you as many times as yeah, we but, need to. But I, th- I think in the book it was that uh, like he also uh, was in a different body at some point. Yes, yeah. You know, when... No, they, in the virtuality he was put into a woman's body so they could, they could uh, torture him yeah. and rape him. And that was quite, like, more than grim, yes. that scene. Yes, like, it is pretty I grim. I mean, it is But to just... be honest... The TV oh. show, some t- some of the times in the book where he just goes, oh yeah, and I just went around killing everyone. And you're like, yeah. okay, that's an interesting statement to make. Yes. Was in the TV show, you actually see, you see it, it over and over again, yeah. and you're like, but oh, this is actually pretty Yeah, yeah it is, it is. <laughs> like, I, I think I counted at some point in, in the, in the, in every episode there is violence. Oh, yes. In every one Well, they them. need it. They can't do an episode yes. which doesn't have a good which, fight. I mean, you have to be kind of just living with it and be strong about it, but it, it shows the points a little yeah. more. Um, so, and then one thing in the book, you know, in the book, they um, the police guys um, yeah. are called uh, the Mo- Mohicans. Mohicans. Yeah. Mohicans. And, um, it's because they all go to the same They hairdresser. go to the same hairdresser. <laughs> and this is totally the kind of cyberpunk uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that we see in quite a lot of things, and then they have yeah. the, the 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 hairstyle there. So now this is like just some badly um, researched bit of uh, stuff because um, I did like it, it immediately got to me, and I thought, oh, I looked this up, yeah. and it turns out that um, it, it he, this is actually only that you you only call this hairstyle Mohican, yeah. yeah. The, the Mohicans, like yeah. the. the the tribes. The, yeah, they don't call it the tribe. They don't. They, they don't even have it. No, it's I don't. Other that's, tribes. That's a very. That, that's a very well known factoid it, that the it, Mohican it, tribe never wore wo- Mohicans. It's yeah. just a hairstyle named after. The association after. comes from Hollywood, yeah. and more specifically from the popular 1939 movie *Drums Along the M- Mohawk*, Mohawk star- starring Henry Fonda. Yeah, they were like, let's, think, let's give these guys cool if haircuts. If you have yes, but if you have a story set so far in the future, why would you then take a a, a, a cult like a thing? It's that not. It's, he's purely talking about the hairstyles. It's just there were hairstyles, and then when all the people who he could have said the beehives, he could have said the he could have said the crew cuts, he could have said the skinheads. It's like it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, I just don't like it that it's like it's it's a it's a word that is used in uh, wrong in wrong way. No, it's not. They were mo- they they all wore Mohican hairstyles, so he called them Mohicans. It's if they were skinheads, he would have called them skinheads. If they were if they were long haired hippies, he would have called them long haired hippies. It's just using a hairstyle. I don't think there's any anything too what, no, what racist saying, or insensitive yeah, yeah, about no, that. But yeah, that's the whole point. Because it is so. Oh, this is just the yeah. way they call it. I yeah. don't think it is. Well, good. so okay. So what do you call the Mohican then? I would just. I don't know. The, the no, it's just that. stripe. No, but you it, can you can find no, new names. It's just that's just not what, how words work. That's not the, that's just not how writing and words and language works. Yeah, but this was worn by the pony. It's a different tribe, and the pr- tribes who actually again, they, they yes, sure, but you can't say an Apache helicopter doesn't come from the Wild West. It's it's built as a as a war helicopter that shoots missiles. Let's not call it an Apache helicopter anymore. The tomahawks, yeah, that's, that's, like let's not call them tomahawk. Like all these different. That, that's not a tomahawk. That's just an yeah, axe. It's not that, like, it shows even worse. No, how it is. It's like just misused. it's just an, yes, but it's misused. But now that is language, and now that is what mm. that hairstyle is called. There is no other name for that hair right we just talked for five minutes about fucking haircut which has got no bearing on the book at all I think and and that didn't they didn't take that in the in the there was there were a few of the a few of the police um, a a few of the policemen did actually have Mohican hairstyles yeah Yeah, I I was looking for it but it was mostly back not the main characters Mm. but a few of the background police characters did have Mohicans I think that was just a reference to the book for a little easter egg for the people who've read the book yeah Uh, you we're going on really long now we've been over an hour and I still don't know you keep saying oh let's go for more notes how many more notes do you have to go through? Because I want to be wrapping up soon. Okay, one done? more thing. One okay. more note. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, no. If it's three more things, that's great. But I don't know if it's one more thing, two more things, or 15 more things. So what? how many notes have you got? Uh, no, I'm just not going to say No, no, no. no, no. A, I want to know because I've seen this note. You've said the backpack. And I've seen yeah. this note here. Yeah. Go through the notes. But I don't know how many notes you have. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. I'm not saying well, I don't want... Well, in the TV just... show, the, uh, the, oh. he, he, for some reason, what? carries around this... this uh, Plastic pink Hello Unicorn. Little, uh, it's a Hello Kitty bag, but yes. they're not allowed to use Hello Kitty, yes. so it's Hello Unicorn. But it's, but it's 
it, it it's just so outstanding. Like it, it's coming through all it's in all the scenes okay, where he just okay. comes and then here's, here's swings it over his shoulder. This massive guy with his little pink. If it here's a question: so Do you you think that's a good thing, or I think do you think it's, it's brilliant? Oh, you really did? okay? Because I really liked it. And if you went about yeah. that and were no, like, I was, "Why is he doing that?" It doesn't no, make any sense. So, I was like, "It's oh, such no, that's a little perfect. twist, like twinkle eye." Thing, yeah, like. it feels very much like it feels very much like uh, okay, we have this. They do this quite a bit, you know, like the what the bag is that people carry around. You kind of need to know that if you see that bag, oh shit, trouble's going to break out. Also, it's a little bit like you know in Indiana Jones when he has the hat. So there's a hat, and it's beyond the thing, and he always it has to go back it. for that. It's, hat, yeah. He always get, and so there's a little bit with the backpack. So yeah. there's um. <clears throat> it's a, it's, it's a, a little bit of a plot, plot uh, like a plot and TV device and yes, stuff like that. It's it's okay. It's next note. No, that's it. Really? You yeah. have no other notes? Well, I can... I can. Um, no, no. Well, I How many more about... notes have you got? That's what I'm saying. All I want to know is, are we going to talk for another 15 minutes or no, are we going to talk for another uh, three minutes? I think minutes? I'm done. All right, that's good. So I, that's what I was trying to get to the, 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 to the bottom of. I was like, how, lo- how much longer is this podcast going to be? Yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> the only uh, vaguest thing that I want to say, which people have read the... Who've both read the book and... Or, or people who've watched the TV show and read the book... Um, in the book, he has no sister. No spoilers about what happens with the sister. What do you think about the inclusion of the sister in the TV show? I thought it gave him, it gave the whole thing a bit more um, character. It gave it a bit more uh, dimension because I think in the book he was uh, too much of a, uh, a solo, a solo yeah. person, and I think that kind of uh, just gave it a little extra. I, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it in some ways because in the book, the character that she replaces suddenly like turns up like near the end or like three quarters and something like, yeah. oh, he's got this whole hash- history with this character yes. and they've had run-ins in the past and done this kind of stuff in the past. And it was seemed- it also a woman? Yeah, it was a woman. Yeah, it's a woman it was well. a woman. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't want to give away too much of, of, of who she replaces no, no, in no. the book or anything like that. But the person that she does replace in the book, I was <laughs> like, oh, that feels really obvious. But then it felt like it, it didn't... I mean, I enjoyed it, the inclusion in the book, yeah. for, in the TV show, but it did it did leave the end of the book having a different ending yes. to the TV show in a way which, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the, the TV show had such a different end to the book because it involved the family and, and the other family and these other family members True. here and daughters here and sisters there yeah. and brothers there. And, and they just went uh, a different and, path. Yeah. But I think it was a, a deli- deliberate what, thing. All I want to say is that I think the very end of the book the final sequence in the end of the book is a lot shorter. He goes in there, completes the mission, does it, and it and it wraps it up. In the TV show, because they had to spread that out pretty much over an episode and a half, they had to keep finding more things to do and more situations and more danger and more action and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of wished it just wrapped up a bit quicker. Really? Yeah, I, I think... I thought it was really well... I think... Um, no, I it... think the pacing in that last episode, because they had to keep... Go- oh, now we're going to wrap this thing up and wrap that thing up. Hmm. And in the book, it was all, like, wrapped up a lot quicker. You yeah, but of... I thought it was nicer that, that that the way that he, like, he faced the different people with the different things. I think that... That came across but to me some, a lot But nicer. some of his moments that he was just did in passing, they're like, oh, well, let's give this moment that he did in passing to this other character. Like, you know, and then, oh, to this other character. Oh, and this other character's yes. there. And they have to have an... Yeah, and yeah, so you, okay, had, you had to yeah. keep switching okay. around between the different characters. Okay, there was this one, this one diversion with with the lawyer thing. Yeah. I think that was not necessary. Yeah, there was a, there, I'm just saying there was a... It, because they had actually engineered the, more things into the story, yes. most of, and for most of the TV show, I was well behind it. You yes. know, the inclusion of the families, the inclusion yeah, yeah, of these yeah. other characters, the lawyer was a bigger um, character, yeah. the, the computer hacker and her husband were bigger and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. There was, and the hotel had a lot more to do and Ortega had a lot more to do. And the daughter. And, and in the book, they kind of like... Because there wasn't all those different um, things that they had to wrap up into yeah, yeah, it yeah. it was like oh great he could just finish the story pay it off yeah. and that's okay whereas the TV show they're like oh and now we've got to finish off this one and this yes. person has to have a heroic moment and this yeah. person has to have a heroic moment and this new villain has to die in an interesting way and this one has to and they've got to do it this way yes. and I just and I found it just took a bit too long to get through uh, to the climax at the, in I the TV show I must say though that in the book because it had pacing issues in the middle yes. that pacing that wrapping up at the end was like whoop and yeah. it's like Oh, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, now it's, it's over? No, yes. that was quick. All I'm saying and is... And in the, in the TV show, yeah. of course, it stretched a little bit and it was a little cramped, but overall, the, yeah. the, it was a bit more even, yeah. I think. Yeah, the, the pacing in the TV show is better and it's just shorter as well. Yes. Uh, in the in the book, I think they, they could have cut, you know, like, uh, of the audiobook. I think this is like a 17-hour audiobook or 
15 hour audio book they could have cut out two hours of him running around bay city and getting up to you know whatever stuff there yeah. and uh, because in these in these um uh investigation stories there's always like oh we think they've solved it oh no they haven't solved it yeah. oh no they really solved it yeah. it's the standard thing and just the bit between oh i think i've solved it oh no i haven't solved it yes he actually, in that moment, actually solves it. But then there's loads of more stuff that he yeah, has to yeah. do before yeah. he does the final big reveal at the end where, you know, everyone gets together in a room and everyone yeah. explains what's going on. Like that. They do but that the, more uh, in the TV show. The, the um, Agatha Christie yes. kind of yeah. moment. <laughs> and in the, in the TV show, they did the Agatha Christie moment, like the bit between the, I've solved it. Oh, no, I haven't solved it. To the, oh, no, I've really solved it. In the TV show, it was compressed. In the book, it felt too spread out. You're like, ah, oh, no, this is not the time when you have to be running around and doing lots more things. Yeah. If you've literally already solved it and he does the envoy intuition and puts it all together in his head and we mm. see all that kind of stuff, mm. at that moment you need to be setting up the final scene. And in the book they're like, right, let's spend another 45 minutes of him oh, going yeah. here and getting to fight there and it coming was that, into this the, There was a hundred pages yeah. where it just like, oh, it just didn't move. Yeah, it didn't move. And in the, but because that wasn't, because that was spread out, actually quite a few of those scenes which were in that section, they actually just moved to different parts of the TV yeah. story, in the story, that, in the yeah. story of the TV show. Yeah, and then they get to the, and they get to the end, but like I say, a lot of that stuff which was being paid off throughout the book was then all cramped was all it felt so the the last episode felt too long to get to the end of the action mm. but also too full of stuff that had to happen yes. if you know what i mean it's yeah. sort of like oh and this other innocent person has to die to make this person feel bad oh and this other person yeah. has to have something good happens to them and bad yeah. happens to them so when it pays off it's like you know it just felt a little bit too much so that's all i wanted to say you know just generally that i do have issues just with the very like the final sequences in the tv show or the, you know the final action and confrontation and resolution in the tv show yeah some of the actual story ideas like in the in the book the guy's son isn't so much of a factor but here they're like oh we need to make the family aspect yeah. more important so his son is yeah, more important is more the, in the tv the show in the book yeah they yeah, kind they, of they kind of switch some people yeah. around they switch some roles around yeah. there isn't a driver in the tv show but what the driver does is partially put onto the lawyer partially put onto the sun partially put onto the white you know yeah. there's, it's spread around a bit more yeah. so so yeah there is there is some different balancing acts of what, what what the story is about and how it pays off and where the pacing issues are i'm just saying if you get to uh, uh, but again you hadn't read the book before you fi- watched the final episodes yeah so you didn't realize that i was expecting oh he goes in there this happens this happens and boom, like that's so why i was always just waiting oh look we already know what the thing is let's yeah, just yeah, get yeah. to it of course. whereas if you're just watching the tv show it's like oh right that person yes. has to do something that yeah, yeah. so i think it's just a, a thing it, of reading the book of first knowledge. and then watching yeah, yeah, the show. Of knowing what is going to happen i didn't know so it for me it felt a little bit yes. more natural yeah whereas yeah. in the book that's such a not a short sequence but Kills compressed it. compressed Oop. sequence because yeah. it's all against the clock mm. and they do it by the you know it in the book that it, it gets it by the end of the clock by the clock mm. whereas in the tv show it's all against the clock and then oh they've got a few hours to hang out and pick some people up here and deliver these things here and do mm. stuff anyway yeah. so i think that's okay. it um altered yeah. carbon for the book what would you what rating would you give the book um so i i gave it on on uh, goodreads i gave it kind of like three and a half stars and you can't yeah. give it three and a half stars yeah. so um i um this is kind of like a combination of of the, the tv show and the book okay so the TV show was this. Better. This and rating isn't going to show up on the data because it's because this. I'm just going to. Oh, yeah, alter, alter, like, alter, I'm just going to call this altered carbon. Yeah. Um. It's four. Uh, so maybe three point seven five. Three point seven five for me. Yeah, for the book. Yeah, I'd give the book for me. It does have that pacing issues, but except for the pacing issues and the like interminable fight sequences which go on and on, you just like oh, oh get, let's get the book. It, no, I just was just, just talking about, yeah, if you was the three stars. For me, it's a four stars. And it is, I think, one of those important books because it's actually good cyberpunk. It's cyberpunk, which mm. is influential. Mm. It, you, it you know, shows its influences, but it's also influential. And it's got some, it's an interesting exploration of these ideas. Weirdly, though, like I say, the the um the tv show is kind of like almost a better realized exploration of the ideas in the book if the the story isn't quite as strong and it kind of it, it's an exploration of family and stuff and yeah. none of that's in the book at all yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's weird that because the book is good they could make a really really good tv show out of it yeah. like it's really solid 
um, source material for the TV show. Sometimes it felt like this was already a script. Like sometimes yeah. it had this like yeah. up in the clouds, this and this and this, yeah. and then uh, in his in his head, did it, did it, and then did it, did it. Like especially the scene that is not in the book where he he they take him to Europe and then yeah. he goes through all the bottles and then like, it takes drugs and stuff. Uh, I don't remember. That. That's in the in, in the, the book. It, that's in the it, book. It, yeah, not yeah. only in the book. And yeah. then it, the way that it was written looks very much like. Yeah. This happens yeah. here. Okay, like we're wrapping up. We have a, in, yeah. a, in a script. Yeah, yeah. so... So it was... It w- I think it is one of those books that is more... It's... Oh, okay. Why did you do that? No, no. It's um, the um, uh, the, it's an easy it's an easy um, source. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's a great source, and you can see that yeah. um, Richard Morgan, as the story consultant or as a consultant on the TV show, makes a lot of sense. He's obviously yes. got some uh, some interesting ideas there. That's so yeah, true. I would say watch the TV show yeah. because then you don't really have to read the book. Because but it's the, reading the book, it's a different experience. Yes, it is. I think the book but it is is, is much more about the ideas yes. and much more about the politics and a lot more. Like I just think like the politics are clearer in the book and yeah. I do think it's a very political book and that the politics are watered down so much about in a TV show because they don't want to they don't want the TV show to be literally eat the rich and yes. um, you know let's we have to kill off the previous yeah. generation for the new generation to yeah. get power and all that kind of stuff which is yeah. it, it, all of that's much more in the book so uh, yeah I rated this book four stars um, in my on by the Goodreads. way I, I got this um, recommended by Jesse uh, yeah. from SFF Audio last, yeah. last year I think yeah. Yeah. And you said, oh, here, you should... Um, I've recommended this book to you a few times. I don't remember that. Oh, really? No. I, I have. Anyway, no. so we've been going about an hour and 20 minutes. Anything, any last thoughts? Anything else you want to say? Should, 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 I, should I read the other books? Um, I would suggest... The thing is, I've actually just read that not so many people watch this, and the critics didn't enjoy this TV series so much. On, really? Yeah, which is weird, because I think it's really good. Um, again slight issues and pacing issues mm-hmm. aside but the thing is it cost a lot of money and apparently okay. and I mentioned this to you before apparently like the Ozark TV show is really cheap because mm-hmm. you just get like five actors and a camera to run around the woods in Kentucky or wherever the Ozarks is <laughs> um, maybe not Kentucky <laughs> but where are you know where it is it's sort of a hillbilly country but not hillbilly country or whatever um, so that's really cheap and some of these other TV shows are actually really cheap whereas this it's sort of like almost every every shot has got special effects in it like it's you know all these sets what I love about when they go into the visu- into the VR like every single time when they go into virtual reality they, it starts off with this like um, 360 degree lens you know like when you see the yeah. uh, when you see the VR headsets so it's sort of like oh now people know what VR video looks like it's yeah. this warped thing where you actually see all of it yes. and you and you have to have the special YouTube plug-in to look around yeah. or you yeah. put it on your phone and swing it yeah. around people already know what that footage looks like so yeah. when they go into VR they first show that yeah. and then they show it like more like point of view yeah. kind of thing but they always put their warping around yeah, the yeah, edge exactly yeah so all That's of good. these really clever technical things. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention about the world building is the... Just, uh, what did yeah, you I, but I just want to say it's a post-mobile phone TV show. And I've, it's very few times where you see mm. um, TV shows or movies which exist in the modern world. No, sorry, are modern creations which yeah. acknowledge that cell phones are a thing. And in the future, interpersonal communication is going to be easy and simple but everybody nobody is carrying around a mobile phone mm. you just see a glint in their eye and, and that means they're them connecting focusing on yeah, something, something a like, bit closer they just yeah. kind of look off to the left hand side and i really like that it, it i very 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 rarely see what modern technology that we have now like what's that going to look like in the future which isn't just a thinner phone you know all of these different things you see someone pick up and they always get, make it transparent or it's yeah. projecting something or somewhere and they're in, lifting in up discovery no yeah in the star yeah. trek discovery and all those different kind of things mm. they always pick it up and it's like see-through it's like nobody wants a see-through phone because you don't want other people in the room to just see what you're looking at yes. but in reverse it makes no sense at all mm. whereas putting it into the eye you're like yes that's you know they're not wearing goggles they're not wearing stuff they just mm. they're just the white of their eye just flashes white and you can see them look and they're like oh that's all I need yeah. and, and that kind of thing is really great so yeah but I'm just saying that there's a lot of money in this so if they're going to renew or if they're going to have a season 2 of, so you say I should rather watch the TV show than read I'm the I'm just book. saying the second TV show uh, the second season yeah. of Alter Carbon might not be coming anytime soon because okay. it's very expensive or they can 
maybe they'll just say, well, it's a bit expensive to have it in a cyberpunk city where everything's like that. Maybe they're just going to do it as everyone's running around in a forest, like they did with the Quellis. You know, they could just be like, oh, okay, let's just film the whole thing. This whole adventure, this whole season takes place in a, an abandoned warehouse in a forest. So you're saying they, they will take more a diverted pa- a path from the original source material. I'm, They're not going with the same book books like they I, have it. Maybe. I'm just saying the second book is a big epic space adventure. Okay. And that might be a little bit too expensive to have a 10 episode series of space adventure with a well, with a new actor because they're not going to use the same actor yeah. uh, but they can use any actor that they want now yes, yeah, of course. Uh, they can put them in a woman uh, they can put them in a uh, should I read the book that, that's my question to you it, yes okay you should either read the book or watch the TV show okay. Good. but if you're going to watch the TV show you'll be waiting a few yes, years I forget it but I wasn't asking about TV uh, show I, I thought you were asking should asking. I read the should I read no. the book or watch the second no. season no no, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying, literally just asking. If you want to, I would, I, read I would totally read the. Book. I would totally read the second book. I've not read them since I started the SFBRP, which is over ten years okay. now. So yeah, we could read that. We could carry on with this series if you can put up with the um, uh, penises and sex. It's more like that. Oh, no, I'm okay. just saying. Now, guys. No, really? actually, there's actually some really interesting um, uh, lesbian couples scenes with body swapping and stuff. It's it's there's some good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying sexy interesting. I'm saying like. Uh, interesting uh, like exploration yeah, expert, yeah. Uh, stuff like that alright that's it um, four stars for me three stars 3.75 3.7 stars for Juliana for the book the TV show uh, I don't give stars but thumbs up go yeah. for it uh, yeah. and that's it thanks a lot for listening and we'll catch you next time goodbye